Hi everyone and welcome back to Open TTD with me, Tommy P. Last episode we finalised all of the station upgrades on our cargo network and since then I've been doing a number of our bits and bobs. So here at Trembourne East I've added in some eye candy pieces. I did eventually end up just keeping the existing lorry stations that were already in place. I also had a depot in here. That's that one taken care of, just to show you that. I added in our Padston Disaster Memorial. The third one <laughs> to appear on this network. I also very slightly changed how this was just to make this a bit more of a straight line. This did have a bit of a kink in it. So that's that taken care of. And now the network is complete. I have finalized all the balancing on this line and as you'll see from our operating profit graph that has helped to boost profits and it's added nearly a million pounds worth of additional annual profit for us One of the other things I've spoke about a lot with this engineering supplies depot was to try and get this depot up to a thousand crates. I have just recently finished the balancing, so some of the timetabling is still taking place, but I have seen this now running at only 1300 crates a month and we have an absolute abundance of supplies here and all of our industries around the primary industries are at a cranking it production phase so this surplus that we have here we should be able to use at some point in the future for other primary industries in and around which will make boosting production a lot easier on those other cargo chains that we will eventually set up I'm pretty pleased overall from humble beginnings of Trent Bourne Wells here to Flamingville Refineries. We've built up quite a large and complex cargo network. And just finally, before we leave the network, something I've spoke about for quite some time is creating a priority merge and have a hold up here and the way that you do that I'm just going to do it on the one merge here I'll change this to an entry signal. And what I'm going to do is I'm then going to change this to a combi single but make it two way. And when this 
blockage finally ends. I'm just going to run this on a little here. And what this does is basically it looks at this entire block and will always keep the signal red. See how it's green here? We'll always keep that red. So if there are trains in this block here, it will always give them priority over this line here. I just wanted to show you that. And that is our cargo network fully completed. Oh yes, just something very quickly to point out. We ended up with a huge lorry station here. In fact, I just noticed I didn't change this to how I envisaged it. Very quickly get that done. But as you can see, there is just a huge amount of vehicles running around here everything getting picked up straight away this is at 1500 crates of explosives a month do have a lot of explosives still to take from here but can't really put any more trains onto the network you see there's already too many blockages. Yeah, there you go. Over a thousand crates as predicted. So with our cargo network completed, or the, certainly the first stage of our cargo network, we're going to turn our attention back to our passenger network. As I mentioned a couple of episodes ago, the idea here now will be that from Little Rimfing Berry North here, we'll add in some extra platforms to this station which will then come out and then come down here to start connecting all of these up but just before we do that as I believe we now have Yeah, these sort of sprinter style locomotives, which are passenger only. I did want to create a station here in Chomfingberry Springs. That will only be a small station. I'm just going to very quickly get that set up. I'm going to do this in such a way that the train.
trains that will be calling into this station will go on the outside track way of doing this actually yeah, we'll do it across there we'll get ourselves a little bridge here connect that up to there and I might end up getting a bus service in here as well Bit of a problem. Look at those there. I'm just going to add in just a very small three train length station. Sets. The bridge the stairs, that's the one. Connect that up to Chomping Berry Springs. to there. finished and then with the signaling you hear That's in there. And so the idea here will be that trains that call into Trumpenberry Springs will come off the main track and use the station here without blocking the larger express trains 
and I'm coming through. In fact, I don't actually think we'll need those. Get rid of those. So we'll use this BR AM10. I think I'll actually add, what was that, D75? Carriage train length of two. That right, carry 130 passengers. And I'll tell that to go. No, we don't want it to do that. To Wayward Heights. those signals. In fact, they will only need to be like a standard. I'll tell it to go to Trumpenberry Springs and Back. Once it gets a free path, and we'll this take its first journey I've just realized it isn't going to work <laughs> as it has back so we will need those <laughs> Standard pass signals. I think that should now work. So we will need another one of these, I'm sure. So we'll, yeah, that one's actually just gone into the depot. Because it's going to try and now come out onto the 
this side. Stop that one. Give this little fellow a chance to get out. Try that again. And I think this will also need probably a bit of an upgrade in this station fairly soon as well as we will be putting a lot more locomotives onto this line. Running costs on these are quite cheap. Yep, and that's worked nicely. So running costs here of only uh, 2,700 a year compared to 20 grand on these steam locomotives. So for short little trips like this, these are great little vehicles. distribution for this station is unbelievable and will no doubt get worse once we start to connect up some of the other ones from down south speaking of which I think what we'll need to do first is I plan is to have a small station here, a larger station here, probably a small station coming off here that will connect in because eventually we will take a line off here planning on doing something similar here as well. So, sm small station, large station. We'll probably have a large station here. Which will then, again, form a little branch line down here. have probably a large station at the back here and another large station here as these cities are fairly sizable yeah and even with five stations in there now because of the town growth that I've changed growth is only every 152 days now Start with Prunnington. I 
and our metal station. And for these, I'm going to use um, a new GRF, it's rural stations. And I will connect it up to Prunnington. I'll only be three long. And for now, I'm not going to connect into with a Rumpf and Berry because that's going to take a little bit of time to do that. I just want to. Just get a few of these up and running first, so just thinking I might very quickly change. This bus station location to here. So our train station is quite realistically attach them to here. This will be a six length. Let's have a little bit of room here. Well, so I think we'll do it up to the bridge. will need a connection up to Brimley there and we'll actually add an extra one in which will pop into there that will probably only be now a three station pop that in there that's a brimly end on okay so let's just quickly jazz this up should be able to do something a little bit nicer with this G2 Having the extra platform length.
So that should connect in there. And I'll add that into there as well so that it can be reached by all and that's a disaster. Oh, we wanted that to be part of Fort Drennington High Street. I thought I'd done that. I'll have to try that again. That's better. Let's quickly hit these back in again. Very good. Get these and as money is pretty much no object now. We are at ninety three million pounds in the bank. We can pretty much do whatever we want when it comes to Terraforming and the likes. A little depot in. And I will just set up these now, even though they're not needed. Back down to. We'll go to six on here. Actually, let's get this end done. Nice to be back. On the passenger line. Been looking forward to expanding this for some time now. It's, uh, the cargo network certainly took a lot longer than I was expecting, but some good, good profits from that. First one we'll, we'll set up here. We'll just go for just a single one of these. Travelling between Fort Drennington and Brenley. That's that little fella away. Same vehicle, but I think we'll just add some extra capacity in. And the idea will be that I'll be setting up some new groups, you'll be surprised to hear. that done that. I wonder if it's because I put them there. No, 
No, it's because I've been a bit silly. Try that again. <laughs> and here it comes. But yeah, come back to what I was going to say. So the idea will be that we will have express services that will go from very large station so say from wayward perhaps only to a couple of the very large cities so maybe these one two so three and four cities then we'll have semi express services that will call maybe to the likes of wayward little rimfing berry fort drennington New Hintford Central, uh, Pentborough, and Sonningbury, and then we will have stopping services, which will basically go to every single station on the passenger network for the area that they'll be working in. That will be our plan. So next time round, I think what I will do is I think we'll finish this part of the line off first. And then if we have time, we'll then connect everything up into Little Rimfing Berry. That's it for today, guys. Thanks for joining me. Hope to see you again soon. This is Tommy P. Signing off. <laughs>